Oh my, that's so much better. Okay. Wicked. Awesome. Okay, cool. So anyways, I'm going to probably cut the beginning and just like post the, this part from now on. So I am Veda. I am a co-host on La Fin du Rap on CBL 101.5. And the, the whole goal of this like uh, show is just to like highlight upcoming artists, artists that are shaping Montreal's hip hop scene and beyond. And uh, you've been doing that for like so many years now. I, hey, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I found out about the posters, which was the band you were a part of, like in 2017, I think. So I used to live in I Iowa. I don't know if you wow. know that. And I, I had a radio show there and I was just playing like Montreal artists all the time. And people were just like, who are those people? So when I came in Montreal in the summer of 2017, I was like, I'm going to spend two months here and just see as many concerts as I can nice. and, and meet new artists and do interviews. So yeah. I, I was spending all my weekends at the Belmont on St. Lawrence Street. Hey. And, yeah, and I saw like, I saw Lou Phelps, I saw La Rue, dope. Nana Zen, like bunch of really dope artists. And yeah. then I saw this dope like poster of the posters. And I just love the way it was written. And I was like, who is this? I thought it was like an American band. So mm. I just showed up. I just showed up to the gig. Hey. And people were like raving. It was packed. <laughs> and the, mu the music was so good. Like the instrumental were like quality. And all of you guys were rapping on stage. And I was like, who are those guys? So <laughs> I like, I watched the whole thing. I, I took some pictures and then I went backstage. And I was like, you guys want to do an interview? <laughs> Wow. And you were down. You were down. And yeah. Chris Spirit was down too. I think yeah. Nate had left or something. So so that's yeah. how we met. So that's how it began my journey of listening to your music through the posters. So I kind of wanted to know what your background was before I met you. Like, how did it come up to that point in like 2017? How oh, did man. it come about? Ah, uh, like how did we get to that point at the Belmont? Like, you know, like just the whole yeah, fucking story. Yeah, it's kind of like um, all of a sudden you guys had such a huge momentum and yeah. were known everywhere. And I was like, who are they? And I feel like it's still kind of unclear how you guys like met and like how. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you feel like talking about it, I think it'd be a good introduction for the people listening. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. How long do we have, by the way? Uh, as long as you want. I mean, usually it's like. It starts at like 30 minutes, but it can be as long as you want. It can be an hour. It can be, oh, you know, okay. if you got stuff to release, here's <laughs> the platform. All right. All right. Okay. So uh, basically, uh, okay, like posters, how do we start, man? Like uh, yeah. basically uh, Nate, Nate, uh, Nate was kind of in a crew with, with, uh, with a guy named Spida. Okay. Um, this was before poster Post, like the title even Nate, existed way back. you know and yeah like Nate Nate was making music at uh at a um at a community center in in Little Burgundy okay. uh that. which was called Youth in Motion okay. and Youth and Motion. he was making yeah he was making music with a friend of his at Youth in Motion just like two buddies making music you know okay, and good. and Chris 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 uh, Chris the Spirit just happened to 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 also record at the same Uh, at the same community center but he was not they were not a group they just they just okay. happened to like cross paths sometimes you know okay. thank you so much. when when like when like one of them uh, when one of them would be finished their session like mm -hmm. uh you know chris would come and do his session and be like oh yo dope yo dope beat bro like you know what i mean it was just some passing thing and okay. uh but i think i think i think they kept hearing each other's shit and they were like they had a respect for each other like a mutual respect you know uh in the community center context you know what i mean yeah. and uh And then what's crazy is that I went to the same high school as Nate's friend Spider. You know what I'm saying? So Nate would go Nate would go record with Spider. Nate would record with Spider. Spider went to the same high school as me. And in Spider Yeah. I, I was I'm a little bit younger than those guys. Like I'm like two years younger or some shit. Okay, got you. Um, so you guys were like we're talking about like what, 2014, 2015? Or I, I think earlier? I don't even know. Yeah, my my sense of time is so shit, bro. Like I know, <laughs> like I don't know shit. I, dude. I guess you guys started releasing stuff like from what I saw online in like 2014. So that was maybe just a little bit before. So you were still yeah. in high school, and you know what? They... Sorry, go ahead, my bad. You were still in high school. For sure. Like <laughs> for sure. For sure. Starting high school, like like 
maybe like just and just beginning CJEP, like just graduated high school type shit. Like right there, like still super, yeah. okay. super fresh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Like and uh, spider. Yeah, and basically, long story short, like, uh, fucking, I was like this young dude in high school. You know what I mean? Like, no, no, it was before we graduated because Spider was still in high school with me. He's a bit older than me. Anyway, long story short. I was like, I was like the young beat making kid in, in high school. You know what I mean? I was the kid that was yeah. like always beatboxing. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> like, like dude, I didn't even rap. Like I just was just the beatboxing guy. Like everybody knew like at recess, like, yo, yo, Joey, make a beat, bro. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you know, they, whatever. They that knew type you shit. were there for, for them. Yeah. So like, so like Spider knew I made beats okay. and he heard, he was like, yo, bro, send me some beats, man. I'm going to go to the studio. And I'm like, okay, sure, man. Like. I'm just like, dude, why the fuck not, you know? Yeah. And uh, I'm me, I'm trying to copy Neptunes. I'm trying to copy Timbaland. I'm trying to like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to copy but Kanye like, at the yeah. time, like, with like and, learning, and you know. What program were you using? It's, I like uh, all of them. Like, I tried all of them. Like, I was just oh, like, real? Okay, you were just Ableton, like, bro. Like, oh, let's try yeah. Ableton. Okay. You know, I had like, long story short, I had like a netbook computer. I had like this, the, the most shit netbook com computer that is possible to have. And it was so it was so shit that like the screen was so small, like you'd have to like use the mouse to like, fuck it couldn't even show the full program on the screen, so you'd have to move the mouse and then the 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 screen would move like you know what I mean it would move downwards if you scroll to the bottom of the fucking it was nuts man, anyway, long story short, Spider took some beats, okay I, I didn't hear anything you know about it and just like okay I gave him beats whatever, and uh he he messaged he messaged me like two weeks later. And he fucking, he hit me with some song called Fresh Fade, some fire ass beat, some fire ass okay. song. And it okay. was, it was Nate and Chris both on the, on the track. Oh. And, uh, yeah. you know, I'm, yeah, it was the first time that I heard somebody on my beat that was dope as fuck. I was like, oh shit, this is sick. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, my, my young teenage self, I'm like, oh, yo, man, yes. these guys are actually, they know how to fucking rap good. Let's make more for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm all excited. Yeah. I'm like, yo, I could be like Pharrell, bro. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Basically, you know, like, I'm going to be Timbaland. Like, grand. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm going to be Kanye. Like, you know, so like, yeah. no, but like as a teenager, bro, you just, you know, whatever. Course, You're thinking crazy shit. Your mind exploded. You were like, the possibilities. Exactly. The possibilities. Yeah. Just so pumped, you know? Most and uh, fucking uh, what happened? So, yeah. So I just gave them more beats and I, you know, I heard their, I heard the track that they made. I was so excited. Ended up going to the studio with them. Oh, that's you cool. know, I was I was like a I was like a shy uh, music geek dude, so I was like kind of mm -hmm. shy. But everybody was super chill. I gave them more beats, kept working, and uh, we just you know we just fucking it kind of was born right there, you know. It worked. It worked, yeah. and then you like suddenly released an EP and another one, and it just like yeah, it took off on its own, like organically, just organically. With, with time like you know like if you if you do something like yeah. it's the funny thing is like people only notice things like when they're already moving but like you know, they don't see like yeah. you know they don't see all the ground behind the scenes gutter going through the mud trash shit you got to do you know what i mean that's true so it's like you know for, for us like i guess when you saw us at belmont for us it had already yeah. been like four years of fucking grinding you know what i mean three years that's of fucking true. grinding type shit you know that's so, so true so much yeah. like behind the scenes of like where it began so that, that's why i was so curious about like the guys like meet at the grocery store or they were they from the same school like what's what happened because you guys because i saw in interviews from the past and i was like these guys they look so different yeah but somehow it's kind of like it works <laughs> and yeah. i guess they, they complement each other and they just you know work and that's what happened because you yeah. were there making dope beats and and rapping of course but i think what really bit. stood out what stood out for me was really like the quality of the instrumentals thank and you it's it's so rare that you hear like straight up fire instrumentals that are like red you would hear them on the radio and would think oh this is like anderson pack type stuff and that was like way back so that's why i was so excited and even last week i was still listening to what's uh, bulele bulele Bulele, bulele. and i was like what is this this is like <sighs> timbaland kind of stuff so Yo, you caught the timbaland eh, at the end yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah yeah i was like this is like very similar to what i like to hear on the radio but like big name so 
appreciate anyway, that. That's, because... why, that's why I know it's kind of like part of the past, but it, yeah. I thought it was so interesting to see how from there you you guys created kind of like um really hip hop y even like should I say rock like punk a little bit like there was some punk in there and it was people were like freaking like mosh pits at the concerts like there was something you know really yeah. intense and yeah. then last last year you released three songs like from your solo project and I kind of saw a glimpse of what you used to do for the posters but then when I heard the song all about us I was like, oh my gosh, this, should, this is such a jam, like very different what, from what you used to do. Was It was more like, uh, like should I say R&B? Yeah, <laughs> like, no, for sure. R&B for sure. and like your vocals on, on there are so nice. You're singing. Yeah, for sure. yeah. You're singing. I assume you wrote the lyrics and you you made the beat. Yeah. I didn't make the beat though. For, oh, for all, for all, I made the beat for My Life and uh, Hello, okay. but about us, it was my buddy, my my two buddies, uh, Neo and Gary. Okay, got you. Shout yeah. out to them. Yeah. And yeah, as you mentioned, you also released two other songs last year that was so good. But I don't know. There was Thank something you. about, uh, um, about all, wait, 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 where am I? About us that was like so, I don't know. It was just like so raw in a sense. But hey. you kind of kept it like hip hoppy. And uh, and I think it's your parents on the cover. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's so cute. They heard the song. <laughs> yeah. Of course. What yeah. did they say? Oh man, the, you know, they they loved it, man. They loved it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. especially you know, use the cover and all that, and yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. it was so personal. Yeah. And so in your household, like when you grew up, were they the ones that like? were playing music all the time or you were the one that kind of introduced music in your house oh man um well long story short like like my my life story is a little bit kind of interesting and weird like basically i had a i had a single i had a single father actually okay usually usually you have a single mother i got a, I had a single father and my dad my dad had me super young he had me like when i was when he was 19 my dad wow and uh my dad was like a like an, my dad's an artist and okay. so he, he's like a crazy he was a crazy like young artist father you know like playing me tons of weird types of music okay. like just hip-hop rock uh new wave motown yeah. fucking just like eclectic crazy oh, shit you know what i mean so okay. yeah so i you know he'd be playing like nwe like straight to compton crazy mother name ice cube from the gang called you know but then he'd be playing like uh Marvin Gaye. Uh, literally Marvin Gaye, like Motown shit after, like, you yes. know what I mean? So it was just okay. this crazy vibe, you know, like. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's so this, how you got introduced. Yeah. My dad, my dad, my dad really just opened my mind to all the different types of genres and like, you know what I mean? And and then from there, I just kind of explored my own damn self just out of curiosity and like, yeah. So dope. Was yeah. there... Was there ever an artist that you heard when, you know, you were younger and when you heard that you were like, oh, my God, I have to make something similar or that brings up the same feeling inside of me? Like for me, I mean, I don't produce beats. I write lyrics and stuff. But nice. when I when I first heard Kei Tronada, I was yeah. like, oh, my God, I was like, I have to create that thing <laughs> or like channel yeah. whatever the fuck he's doing because yeah he, he combined kind of like disco and neo soul and yeah. that's what i grew up listening my mom was a yeah. disco freak and my dad was fucking was like neo soul stuff big so, big respects to, to kate Trinata, man montreal most montreal def. own montreal's own kate Trinata, big respects bro most def. but do you have an artist that did the same thing for you oh my god man um I, I would have to say I have one name in mind. <laughs> I would have to say Timbaland. Timbaland made oh, me want to make. He made me want to make beats. Like he, Timbaland oh. made me aware of what beats even were. He, I didn't even know what a what a producer was before Timbaland. You know, but like yeah. when I when I when I was young, I can't remember how old I was. Like I don't know, like eleven or twelve or something. Uh, I heard. Yeah. Get your freak on, go like that type of shit. Yeah, yeah, the Get Your Freak yeah. on Miss Elliot. And it was just oh, like, yeah. as a kid, man, like, you're like, holy shit, this is next level. Like, this, I've never heard anything like this in my life, you know? And, like, you know, when you're a kid, you think that the artist makes all the music. You don't even know, like, you're just like, it's Missy Elliot. Like, it's her song. She does every, yeah. like, I don't know, you know? And then uh, I think my dad, like, got me the CD because he knew I loved it so much. 
And I think I read, I, I was so obsessed, I read the back and I'm like, dad, what's a producer? And he's like, oh, Timbaland, he made the music. I'm like, what? So then I went on Google, you know, I was like, I knew how to use the internet. I went on Google and shit. And I just Googled Timbaland and I fucking, whoa, like, it was, I don't know if Wikipedia oh, yeah. was even a thing back then. I think it was like early Wikipedia. And I, I just like fucking looked at everything the guy made. And I was just like mind blown at all the crazy yeah. fucking beats. And from that point, you know what I mean? And then from that point, then, you. you know, and then from that point, I like any song that I liked, I'd be like, who produced it? I'd be like, who made this? You made the music, who, you know, this? literally <laughs> yeah. like. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's kind of was the rabbit hole. It was just Timbaland got me down the rabbit hole of like, who makes these sounds? Because they're nuts, you know, like, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. So Timbaland, yeah, I mean, he's, he's something else. He's like a different breed. And I literally read his biography during the holidays. Timbo, bro. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I found his biography at the store the other day and I bought it and he would like it's it's nonsense it's kind of like pharrell when you look at their discography and you're like they did all this in one lifetime like yeah no it's insane it's yeah. insane yo like timbaland like if you think about all the shit that he did in the early 90s like all like the black street shit he did fucking like pony he did pony bro oh, like yeah. what the fuck like <laughs> it's like a fucking strip oh, club anthem know. like it's pony still gets played bro in strip clubs like what the fuck and then he and like like, he had, like, so many eras of classics. Like, he did the Aaliyah shit. But then, like, oh, in, like, yeah. 15 years later, I don't, know, I don't know how long later, but, like, then he did, like, sex, uh, future sex love sounds oh, with fucking... Just, oh, my God. Like, bro, the guy oh. never... Like, how many classic shits is he, was he a part of, bro? Is just retarded. Is this so true? Like, Not different true. eras, you know what I mean? Like, legendary it's, shit, man. And still super relevant and still super ahead of his time. And now he's doing... He's hosting and doing the versus battles on yeah. Instagram. And you're like, how... He he just has a lot of vision, and crazy. So inspired everybody. Like everybody, everyone, almost every modern producer is gonna be like, "Yeah, Timbaland was an inspiration." Like pretty much, like it's every so young dude. Like it, come on. Yeah, so <laughs> like it's it's kind of like I often ask some of my guests, like, "Okay, who do you choose?" You know, between this one and this one, and I often ask, like, "Okay, which one, Pharrell yeah. or Timbaland?" They're different. <laughs> different you know i know they have different different strengths and weaknesses you know that's so true and then yeah. i asked then i asked rick rubin or who's the other one uh, kanye so different <laughs> mega <laughs> different it's like apples and oranges man i know but it's just yeah. so I, i love to hear people's answers because now i kind of feel like you're you're team timbo for sure but it's yeah. just cool to see like yeah what people like from from producers so Yeah. So now, okay, so now, you know, you did the posters, you're working on your solo, you, you released three singles last year, you're working on your music right now, too. So yeah. what would you, what, how would you define what you're doing right now? You're doing, you're uh, focusing on like your rapping, focusing on. Yeah, man. Enlighten us. Oh, man. Uh, what am I trying to do right now? Basically, right now, yeah. I'm just trying to make some shit that I wish was Like I want to hear like some, <laughs> just some unique, di you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm trying to like, because there's a lot, like the way I look at it is like, there's like voids. Like there's like, uh, like for, how do I explain that, bro? Um, <laughs> Take your time. We got time. Like, it's like, you want to fill voids, you know, like for me, there's no outcast doesn't exist anymore. NERD doesn't exist anymore. Early, early Kanye doesn't exist anymore. Oh, Neptunes doesn't, yeah. Neptunes doesn't really exist anymore. Like there's so many things that, Kid Cudi, like he just released an album, but it's like, I fucking love Cudi, but I'm, I, I, it's not like his old one, you know what I mean? Gotcha. And big mega respect to Kid Cudi. But like, you know what I mean? Like those things don't exist anymore. So there's like, there's voids, there's holes in the culture. Like there's, it's filled with new stuff. Like there's Trap and there's Travis Scott yeah. and all these things. They occupy different sections, but like, we don't have any like, you know what I mean? Like, we, like where the fuck, we need a, we need a, we need a substitute. We need, we need the outcast of this generation. Like, where's the outcast of right now? Like, it doesn't, not to copy outcast, but like filling that kind of musical blend whole, but contemporary version, you know? Like, okay. like I like to think about that type of shit. Like, what are the voids and what's missing? And what, what can you offer to fill that? You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, what would I want? What do I feel is missing? And what do I want to fucking hear? Let's make it, yeah. you know, type shit. Yeah. Yeah. And 
totally agree with you. So that's cool. So, so that's your vision right now. Yeah. And and I kind of feel like you've taken like a more I don't know if that's the right word for you. You can let me know. Like a more you're more spiritually inclined like in your maybe in your approach to music like the message you want to like share or like the the approach to your like uh, I don't know like your brand because it's kind of like you're like laid back you, you positive messages or so I don't know it, am I wrong like is this no it's definitely a good it's a def you're definitely it's definitely a, a accurate interpretation for sure yeah because yeah. it's like you know what it is you know what I feel man like I don't want to get so serious but like like oh, the world's with me, the with me you can go ahead There's okay no stress. I love conscious music man like conscious hip hop like because the world is messed up in a lot of ways man the world's a crazy like right now like especially right now covid but even 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 prior to covid bro like global warming bro like like it's like it's almost like it's almost like everyone ignores it but like there's almost a feeling an underlying feeling of like like a uh, lack of hope it's like what do we look forward to like like we don't like we're kind of ignoring 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 and like Oh, Netflix and binge just we just distract ourselves but like shit's going down bro like shit's crazy you know what I mean like like shit's not and we're, we don't really necessarily have the solutions we haven't we haven't mapped out the solutions yet so like all these sorts of things and it's like you know music art can be like a healing thing in a way you know and it's like I want to make stuff that uh uh you know first it's like kind of healing for me in a sense either could because it's super honest and raw and whatever but also can be like either healing motivational eye-opening self-reflective for other people as well but at the same time like at the same time entertaining like i'm not trying to preach you know like i want sure. like i want to make the shit like like it has levels yeah. to it you know it's like you can you can enjoy it on a surface level just entertainment level yeah. or 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 you can if if you need it if you need it to be that you can dig deeper and and get more value out of it you know what I'm saying? If if that's what you need at the time, but you can just like bounce to the beat and have the catchy melody. So that's that's what I like. I want to make shit that you know can be helpful if it needs to be, or just consumed as just a surface level entertainment if that's what you want it yeah. to be at that time. That's a big yeah. long ass answer, but yeah. No, I mean that's it's super clear because sometimes I interview artists and I'm like, you know, music is like the biggest platform. There's billions of streams like every day, pretty much uh rappers are worshipped yeah in the exactly. world rap is omnipresent it's the most listened to genre and i'm like yeah. don't you have something that you'd like to you know Say. uh improve or like a message yes. you want to carry of like oh representation of like exactly, women, whatever and i'm like <clears throat> sometimes people say no and what can Respect, i do about bro. it for Respect. sure but then when people say yeah and i'm like cool and there's so many ways of doing it without saying like love the planet no, exactly no, no. you don't it's have to like, be corny you don't have to be corny exactly because the, it, yeah. it's just gonna sound kind of like um what's the like word? a teacher a parent or like it's yeah. like you know it's whack yeah it's preachy but, and yeah but then when it's kind of low-key and it's like it's present but it's like multi-layered that way it is just it's just part of your subconscious now as you're listening listening to it it doesn't have to be just like good stuff but then if there's something really positive yep. here and there in the lyrics it's still in your subconscious and and yep. a lot of people are listening listening yep. to it. even if you have just a hundred of people listening or thousands like you're impacting their life so why there you not go. do something positive so that's that's what i had noticed like that kind of like shifted or was more prevalent in your music and that's yeah. why i really liked it too and i really i like to share it and stuff and uh, appreciate that big wanted, time yeah that's why i wanted to, to talk with you on the show to have more insight and now i kind of want to know like what we should expect music wise uh, like yeah no for yeah, sure so. um man musically fuck man um <laughs> despite yo, everything that's going on in life yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's, it's crazy because there's so much music on the lap. Like, there's so much music oh, to yeah. come. Like, it's crazy. Like, yeah. I'm really excited. Like, 2021 is going to be a year where I get a lot of shit out in a consistent way, too. Okay. Because, uh, like, 2020, 2020, it was, for everyone, it was crazy. For everyone, it was chaos. You know what I mean? It was just like, holy shit, COVID, what the fuck? What are the rules? What can we do? Like, all this shit. But, um, for sure. yeah. But, but, um, 
I came to a point, 2020 for me was like a test year. It was almost like my business card of like, this is what I have to offer guys. Here are these three songs, this is my vibe. You know? Yeah. And it was Which like seeing, good. yeah, thank you. And it was like seeing like the response and seeing like, okay, do people like this? Are people down for this? And from that point, now, now, right now, it's just about crystallizing like the, the the little factory in the sense that like okay, getting the right mixing engineer so that when I oh when I finish the song, I can just hand it to him fast and then finish the next yeah. song, just so it's like, you know what I mean, like a ship, like like I'm trying to assemble the ship, you know what I mean, so that we can we can move efficiently forward. So like, cause I have yo bro, there's so many fucking songs, like it's too many songs in my laptop, man. Oh, I bet they're just not I done. Bet they're fire. <laughs> you know. And and when you say songs are like we're talking about stuff that you you made the instrumental we're talking about the just rapping like um yeah scenario, like it, it's it's so many different things like sometimes some of them will just be sketches some of them will be like like okay like some will some will be like productions that are already sitting there and it's like i just need to finish the recording and then give it to the mixing guy some are like sketches that i know are going to be really dope like some may just be like me and guitar like and just do do some melody on top of the shit and then, and but i and i'm like oh that has potential i got to do that at some point like there'll be stacks of those and it's just like fuck these all these like sketches need to be f full paintings and like it's like you know what i mean so yeah. it's just there's so much it's just yeah like 2020 my bad i'm like going all over the place i'm ranting like a psycho but basically <laughs> <laughs> but basically like or uh, it is like yeah literally but like 2020 was was the year where it was like okay um i need to like and i tried to do everything myself like because basically the songs yeah. that are out i i i mixed i mixed and mastered them myself like i did all the shit yeah. you know and it was too it was too much Amazing. it's like it's appreciate oh, yeah. that but it's too much like you can't you can't be efficient that way like you can't get things done quickly that way it's like so so long you know and then it's like exactly. and plus it's not even fun like yeah you want to collab with people you want to get other people's yeah. fucking input you know what i mean like it's true. it makes your shit better man like you know what i mean people will hear That's things so you don't true. hear because you're you heard it a hundred million times you, you're not you <laughs> can't even see the fine details anymore all that all that shit so, so, so you're kind of stepping away from the mixing and mastering engineering aspect to more yeah. like the creation, um, yeah. music wise and lyric wise. Exactly. I just want to, I just want to, I just want to produce shit. And even with yeah. co-producers, like I'm working with a, a couple co-producers where I'll start an idea. I'll send them the fucking idea and be like, yo, bro, you want to add some drums to this? And then I'll work on something else. Like just, keep, so it's like a real ship. So Always it's like, get it's like, the ball rolling. Exact, and... bro. Because like. In, in yo in this new do, in this new day and age like it's all about collaboration and just like forward movement like you don't want to have yeah. ego like yo bro i've i've had so much ego in the past like i had to like really like calm calm my shit down so that i can be open to collaborating properly and like cool. not have to not be in control of everything like slowing my own process down like you know so that's that's the vibe i'm trying to be on i'm trying to like assemble a little micro team so that like we can get songs out to the people as fast as possible and just consistently and then you know what I mean? Oh, that's okay, the vibe. Cool. That's really yeah. cool. I mean, we have so many um, listeners and people that send us DMs at La Fin du Rap. They're all mm -hmm. like new artists upcoming. And sometimes a lot of them, they don't have an actual like um, music background. Like they don't have a, you know, a diploma or whatever. And yeah. they, they just love to create and they're sitting in their house. They got these amazing texts that they wrote or beats that they created. And they're just like, where do I go? How do I make this happen? How do I yeah. like collab with people? And I know you're a big supporter of like doing things yourself. Yeah. Right. Because that's power in 20. For sure. For so sure. You know, with all the experience that you have, with everything that you've done, um, it's like, what would be your like advice for them of like, they're in their house. They got their stuff, but they don't know how what to, to do. get it out in the world. Yeah. What would you say to, like, Johnny in his living room <laughs> right now? Uh, man, okay, to Johnny or Sally. Yeah, Johnny you boy. Know, we got we to make sure we address the Sallys. There's some fire women out here yes. making tracks, too, you know? The Johnnies and the Sallys. But, like, okay, okay so say. basically, man, I would just say, like, the first thing, all you really need in this day and age is a goddamn laptop and, yeah. a, US, and a USB microphone. That's from that point bro like like bro like xx tension like made smashers with a usb mic bro you know what i mean like, <laughs> someone wrote, 
just make good music. <laughs> no, but straight up, like, well, just just get a laptop with a USB yeah. mic, and you can literally you can make melodies on the keyboard of your laptop, bro. Like, you, yeah. you can click the melodies in with your mouse, bro. Like, you know oh what I mean? Goodness. And then yeah, once and you then, got and then, those things. Yeah, once you got those once things. Like, once the beat is done, it's just like sitting out there on its butt. It's just waiting in a folder in the yeah top oh, corner. Oh. Okay, well, like, to get it out to the people, you mean? Yeah. Uh, well, I would basically... Okay, this is the trick. This is the trick for, for, for when you're really, really starting. Um, basically, what you do is you take your song and you find, like, seven or eight artists that, like, are similar to what you do. If you, like, you got to be real with yourself. You got to be like, okay, my song, like, fans of Tyler, the Creator would like my song. I think fans of... Uh, uh, Aesop Rocky would like my song. I think fans of uh, Michael Miller would like my song. You make a list of all the artists that would make sense with, you know what I mean? Whose fans would make sense with their, your shit. And then you yeah. fucking go to their followers, DM motherfuckers that are liking the other thing, bro. You poach, yeah. poach followers, bro. <laughs> poach fans, bro. Poach so fans from pre existing things because you know it's, it's, a high, it's a high probability they're going to like okay. your shit if you know that your shit's similar to some other shit. You know okay. what I mean? That's so, the, that's if you're really at the beginning, beginning. I would say that yeah. helps in the beginning to like to, get to somebody build, on board. Uh, you know? To build this, the start of a fan base at least, and find people that have interest yeah. so they can like spread the word a little bit. So that would be the foundation that yeah. you, you would say for people starting. Cool. Yeah. I hope people took some notes. That's good. Okay. All right. So that's noted. And I'm sure there's so many other, you know, steps they can take, reach out yeah. to artists that they want to collaborate totally, with. Totally, totally. So in many things. Case, in your case, well, like, what would be your dream collaboration if you had to send a DM tonight and be like, I want to work with you tomorrow? Goddamn. Oh, man. Ah, oh, fuck. But someone maybe that you've been thinking about could be from the Montreal scene, could be international, like. You know what? Uh, it would be Florence and the Machine. Oh. Because uh, I, I have one song in particular that's been sitting on my laptop for, for like four years. <laughs> Literally, I have a song that's for that's her. like, it's going to be on the first album. And it's I, the hook, I made the hook with her in mind and I've had it for years. And it's when I play it, it's still good. Like it's, it's a, I hope it's a timeless song. I don't know. People will tell you, like people's reaction will tell you, but I, I want her on the hook and I, and I, and I, will, I refuse to put it you, out if she's not on the hook, you, man. You hear one it day. Oh, that. Bro. Okay. She has to be on it, man. <laughs> so Florence and the Machine. Nope. <laughs> she has an angelic, god-like voice. Oh, she's something else. Yeah. And um, it's yeah. kind of like she's been doing more like, um, I don't know how to say it. Like she did stuff that was a beat, like EDM a little bit. But if, oh, you, could totally, if you could totally take her, her style and implement that on like an R&B thing or like a mm. hip-hop thing, it would oh, be man. such a cool... Such a cool, you know, fusion. Yo, if you so like, I don't, if, I don't see why not. Yo, bro, if you like, if you like Bulalay, man, you're gonna like this one, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yo, bro. I'm, I'm down. You should, you <laughs> need instrumental. Oh man, it's too early. I'll send. Yeah. I'll make sure. I'll make sure. If once Florence is on it, God, God willing, I'll send it to you, man. Okay, but it's a deal. <laughs> it's a freaking deal. I'm down. But I mean, I'm, I'm always looking at your stuff and, you know, staying updated. So looking forward to seeing what you're gonna, you know, release this year in 2021. Yeah. And uh, I, to like, conclude this interview, I yeah. did see a picture on Facebook on the posters Facebook page that said, I think it said like, oh, posters 2020 new album. Uh, like is, you know is, that... are, you guys, are you guys playing with us or you am I gonna, am I going to the Belmont in a few months? Oh God. you guys. Uh, yeah, if COVID is fucking done by then, fuck. Um, Hopefully. You know what? I think, honestly, because I don't want to give false hope to, 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 to people, but I think that was, I don't know what that was. Nobody told me anything about that when that post popped wow. up. Like, I was just as surprised as anybody else when I saw that. Like, it was a stunt. I, yeah, I don't know who posted wow. that. I don't want to I don't want to call anybody out. But, uh, but yeah, somebody <laughs> was feeling, I don't know what the fuck that, wow. you know. Big, big love and respect to everybody. But I don't know what the hell that was, so. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So it was just for the controversy and to get people talking. Got you. I don't know. Okay, so <laughs> we're not losing hope. We're not losing hope. Maybe, no, like, you know. Get, yeah. yeah, we'll see. Maybe a collab. Yeah, like, uh, like, 
at some point the shit's gonna happen man at some point the shit's yeah. gonna happen like if you think about it like basically i mean you know like fuck basically because at the end of the day and I, we even we even said it when we were like you know in the whole posters run of things like like we're basically like uh we're basically like we were we were basically like three individual artists kind of in this thing yeah. together right and and, and moment in history you know type <laughs> yeah. thing and even 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 you you said it yourself like it looked kind of like three different vibes kind of but it worked together 100%. so you know and that's really what it was and and you know yeah. like um you know and it it's uh you know everybody kind of you know the group you know everybody kind of went their separate ways everyone was growing in different ways all young guys doing their thing whatever yeah. and yeah, yeah. you know the other two guys you know they 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 have had the chance to express themselves and to kind of like put their fucking flag in the ground and be like this is my expression this is my vibe you know what i mean i haven't really done that yet this i'm i i was like the slow bastard to the party you know what i mean so <laughs> i'm kind of doing that now you know i mean like so i i feel like i before I would even, basically, like, it's not that I'm not down to do a poster. It's just that there's so much shit on my laptop that I want to okay. do, yeah. you know, already. Like, I'm already, like, up to my ears and shit I, I, sh I sure. should be doing. With, so with it's solo like, projects. Okay. Exact. Like, there's I so many, so, I have so many ideas and things, and I'm like, fuck. You know, it would just. But someone yeah. wrote more Joey 2021, though. So hey, respect, wanna, Jeffrey. They want to hear more of your stuff. Respect, and Jeffrey. And also someone earlier was saying that, like, your song my life is the best song oh so I don't respect know who guys. it was but someone wrote that so that's cool i mean we, we like we like what you're doing right now and we just want to hear more and uh appreciate that know, yeah we're gonna play at la fin du rap you just send us the songs and and we'll we'll play them for sure let's go so, yeah so <laughs> i'm so happy that you gave us this interview tonight it was super dope Yo. do you feel like you have anything else to release right now like anything else you want to like mention anything uh covid is making doing is making videos and photo shoots fucking hard and it's it annoying yeah. <laughs> like that's like i'm just had to vent that shit yo that shit is insane like <laughs> holy fuck dude it's mm -hmm. it's, it's it's like anyway I don't want to. I don't want to rant shit that everybody knows. COVID's insane, but mm -hmm. you know what? You know what I want to say is, is uh, everybody hang in there. COVID's nuts, but we will all push through this shit. And also, I want to say that you know what? Like, if we if 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 you're watching and you're based in Canada, you got to remember that yo, we're fucking blessed in a sense because like we got like fucking money from the government, bro. Like we there's no war going on. Our COVID numbers. Our COVID numbers are. My that best. Is, I was gonna say our COVID numbers are low in comparison to other places. Like we're we're in a paradise, so like it's fucked up, but we're also lucky. Keep pushing, stay positive, bro. Use the That's use so the true. use the you know try to use the downtime in a way to like reflect on shit within yourself, get better. So when things open up, you're like boom, you're fucking solid, ready to go. That's what I would say. That's really good advice. And good also to anyone listening, music is one of the best tools to deal with stress and loneliness and feeling down so Amen. listen to listen to joey's you know songs that we can find on spotify and yep. SoundCloud and youtube i assume under apple music everything okay. yeah very dope so the interview is going to be on la fin du rap's uh, ig live uh, the igtv my bad it's going to be there it's going to be on our youtube platform we're probably going to put a big portion of it in like um, one of the episodes that are airing on Mondays at 7 p.m. till 9 p.m. Donc, tous les lundis de 19h à 21h, on va faire jouer nos chansons et des extraits des entrevues, dont l'entrevue avec Joey Sherrod ce soir, qui était vraiment nice. Donc, thank you all so much. Thank you, Joey. Merci à tous. Bonne soirée et on se voit lundi, les amis, pour une autre émission de la fin du rap. Yeah! <laughs> the bl sending blessings your way always and you just keep me posted with your stuff. Absolutely. Yo, thanks for having me, guys. Oh, sure. Peace, everybody. You know it. Thank you so much. Ciao.